Hello, this is Justin Heyer with LongRangeOnly.com. Today we're going to be taking an in-depth look at some new brass available from a company right here in the USA known as Atlas Development Group. Atlas Development Group is a name not very well known among many consumers, but they are not new to the industry. I'm going to look at my notes to make sure I get all this information right. They were founded in 2015 by various veterans of the industry. Together, they have over 225 years of firearms experience. That includes 59 patents and over $300 million in U.S. military contracts. ADG offers various services to the firearms world, including research and development, product testing, and consulting. The ADG Brass Cartridge Division is 100% U.S. made. All materials are sourced here in the United States and all labor is performed here. Each case goes through a 100% inspection via automated means or actual human inspection to ensure the highest quality. They have very hard, hard case heads. They are created using a double strike method during the brass forming process, which makes them harder than other competitors that only use single striking technique. I was able to test various different pieces of this ADG brass compared to other manufacturers and did show that it was between 5 and 10 percent harder. ADG cases are designed to be tough. They need to go through 10 firings at a max SAMI load without losing the primer pockets and without any necks cracked. And each cartridge that ADG creates goes through this process to ensure that it will in fact meet the needs of the customer. Early on, customers began complaining that the primer pockets felt a little too loose. ADG took this seriously and decided to change their specs. Before they had been anywhere from the mid to, to the upper end of the SAMI spec for the primer pockets, all new brass from ADG is now at the very bottom end of the SAMI spec to ensure a very nice feel for the reloaders. The primer pockets have a little bit of a taper to them, more than I've felt in some other brass, and when you go and press your primers in, you may feel a little less resistance at first and they will snug up towards the bottom. ADG prides themselves on being a Magnum brass manufacturer, and they plan to offer various cases to the public later this year, including Norma Magnums, SOMs, and WSMs. All available cases can be found on the Atlas Development Group website, and you have to place your orders via email or over the phone. They are working on an online sales portal to make this process easier for their customers. Now that we have a little bit of background about the company, let's take a look at the brass they sent us to review. ADG sent me some 6.5 Creedmoor brass for this review. I just received it in the bright condition. That means that they've polished off all visible annealing marks and the brass is nice and shiny. Any brass you buy from them, you have the option to buy in this bright condition or you can buy with the uh, visible annealing still on there. Taking the brass out of the box and looking at it, it looked great. Everything felt good. There were no burrs. Uh, case mouths appeared to be nice and square. The head stamps big and easy to read with their little logo on the back. And I didn't notice any big dings or anything. They looked like they'd be ready to load right out of the box. Then I took a little desktop microscope out and looked down inside the cases. And as you can see here, the flash hole's nice and clean. I actually thought that these were deburred, but in talking with ADG, their manufacturing process is just clean enough. It doesn't require them to run a deburring process. But as you can see from the photo, right out of the box, they're ready to roll, so you don't need to waste any time cleaning up your flash holes. After a very positive initial visual inspection, I was excited to get these all measured out and do some live fire testing to see how this brass compares to some other brands that I've been using in the past. As you can see here, there were lots of different tools required to finish this review out. I used calipers, some mics, I had access to a vision system, I used an old RCBS 510 balance beam scale, and then all velocity measurements were taken with a Magneto Speed V3. The rifle was my first custom rifle from a few years back. It's built on a Remington 700 action with a 25 and a half inch Brooks barrel. And this barrel's getting really long in the tooth. It's got about 3,600 rounds down it, and uh, it's definitely on its last legs, and it's all uh, sitting in a Bobby Hart LRT stock. Here you can see all of the measurements I took from the Virgin cases. If you need a little more time to evaluate any of these measurements, just hit pause during the video. It'll let you see them for as long as you need. The weight of these shells is very consistent. 169.7 grain average with only an extreme spread of two grains across the 20 cases was really impressive. Length was fairly consistent as well with an average of 1.912 inches right out of the box, an extreme spread of 9 thou. 
Primer pocket diameters were squarely in the middle of the SAMI spec at 209. Every one of them measured exactly the same using gauge pins. Gauge pins were also used to measure the flash hole diameter. Here you can see that the average diameter was 80 thou with an extreme spread of only one. Flash hole concentricity was measured using a vision system. As you can see, they are slightly off center by about four thousandths between the primer pockets and the flash holes, which I think is fine. I've never measured it, but people had requested this, so I wanted to make sure and include it. So you can see all the data there. Neck thickness came in at an average of 15 thou and two ten thousandths. Very consistent with only a five tenths extreme spread across all measurements. I tried to take two to three measurements on each case to get an average, and they were very, very consistent. So right out of the box, very high quality stuff as these measurements show, and I was very excited to take it through a life cycle test. Here was the load data that I used for the testing of this brass life. This is a max load. Quick load predicted this to be over 68,000 PSI, so it is not considered safe. You need to work up in your own rifles. I used 130 grain burger. I kicked it off with 43 grains of H4350. I used Winchester large rifle primers for the first three firings to get rid of some that I had on my bench that I didn't plan on using for anything else. And then I switched over to some CCI 200s for the remaining firings. And I used a fairly short overall length of 2.74 inches so that I could easily feed them out of, the, uh, out of the BDL style metal on this rifle. Again, this is a max load. Make sure that you work up safely using good reloading techniques in your rifles. Throughout the live fire testing, I wanted to track a couple things. I wanted velocity measurement for every shell on every shot. And I also wanted to track how the length of the shell changed, as well as if primer pockets grew. All shells were full length sized with a 2,000 shoulder bump after every firing. There was no annealing done throughout this test. I wanted to see how long they would last if we would get any cracked necks, and there were none. At the end of the 15 firings, when I deemed it acceptable, all necks were still fine and shells were still running strong. I did not lose a single primer pocket throughout this test. I did end up at the upper end of the SAMI spec at the end of this test, but they were still holding a primer just fine as you'll see a little bit later on. Also, it's interesting to note that I only had to trim one time after the third firing and then shells hardly grew at all after that. For me, this fired case data is very interesting. As you can see, once I switched to the CCI primers for firings 4 through 15, this load was remarkably consistent across firings without any annealing and lots and lots of use on this brass. A standard deviation of 12 across 11 firings was not what I was expecting with only an extreme spread of 55. Now that's not world class numbers, but considering this was just a load thrown together for this test on a barrel that certainly has seen better days, I was very impressed with this. The shells were remarkably consistent throughout all firings. Here's a quick video to show you the decapping force necessary to show that primer pockets are still holding as much as needed. This is an empty shell that I'm going to run through first. This is on a Forster Coax press with just a Lee decapping die. And if I just let it slowly, you know, I'm not using any force on it, you can see it doesn't catch at all. It runs right through the shell without any issues. Now we will put shell number one in and decap it. So here's shell number one. The press is now coming down on its own. Right there it catches resistance. You can hear it push through and release. Shell number two. Contact the primer, push down, you heard it release. And shell number three. Contact, push through to release. Still holding plenty tight after 15 firings. Here we have the three pieces of brass that have been used throughout the brass life testing. We've been measuring primer pockets after every firing. SAMI spec allows up to a 210 thousandths diameter pocket. So we have a 210 thou and a 210 five pin. Here is shell number one. The 210 goes and pulls out with a little bit of stiction. The 210.5 starts and goes just a little bit of the way down, but not the full distance. Shell number two 
210 goes and sticks and the 210 five barely starts shell number three 210 pin goes and sticks 210 five doesn't really start so even though they're on the large end after 15 firings they're still within spec and will still hold a primer as you can see from the review, this ADG brass did not disappoint. It is very reasonably priced, 100% American made brass that goes the distance. It survived plenty of firings. I simply got sick of testing it. After 15 firings, it didn't owe me anything, especially with that load that's well over book max in many of the different books. ADG is also interested in helping the sport grow. They've recently sponsored various PRS shoots and they know what they're doing. They're very well involved in the industry and I expect great things to come out of them. We are testing additional cases. Watch our social media accounts for updates from Bras and others on their Rum Brass and Win Mag Brass. We'll keep you fully updated. As I mentioned before, ADG is very responsive to customer needs and I'm excited to see what they have to offer in the coming months with their new Magnum releases as well as anything else they may have on the horizon. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook as well as click subscribe on our YouTube channel and come join us on the forum.